whether you're working in Word or OneNote or whatever type of tool you're using to keep track of what's happening in your environment, Diffio is part of that tool, looking at what you're writing and what you're reading and bringing you recommendations about new content that introduces new connections and helps you uncover the full story behind the actors and events and threats. So by analyzing what an, um, an end user analyst is studying, our system's able to fan out ahead of them and expand their data horizon. You can think of it as like launching many separate queries ahead of what you've thought of searching for yet. The goal is to bring you surprises, find things that are in the data that you might have eventually stumbled upon if you had infinite time, and present them to the user in a really friendly, easy to understand way that's right next to what they're working on. And as we connect these entities together out in the data itself, we're able to recommend to the analyst that the thing they didn't know to search for yet is perhaps a particular piece of malware. Or maybe the person that they think they're buying some part from is actually a different entity. And they didn't even know to ask that question. That's how Diffio helps. Uh, well, let's branch over to the dark web for a moment. So the dark web is this astonishing place because people trade in the most awful stuff. Uh, and they're brazen about it. You know, the child porn, assassination services, and lots of cyber threat tools are traded in the dark web. Uh, and recently, uh, we were helping a government customer understand the movement of dark web market sellers from marketplace to marketplace. Because these marketplaces get shut down. And if law enforcement is trying to track a particular individual, the person can pick a new anonymous name in the new form, and they're so brazen because they really think they're anonymous. Of course, it's a real human. He's sitting at a keyboard somewhere in the world selling that stuff or providing that uh, exploit kit functionality or other type of cyber tool. And our technology is able to help look at a set of sellers on one dark web forum and match them up with what appear to be a different set of sellers on another dark web forum. And that entity disambiguation functionality is a cross-document inference task that used to be something from computer science. And what we've done is connected it directly into the tools that analysts are using to understand their environment. So if you're, say, an investigative analyst tracking a particular source of malware attacks, and you believe that it's being sold by a particular seller in the dark web, our system can now help you track that seller across dark web marketplaces and perhaps out onto the open web where the person isn't as careful. And you can understand who they are, why they're doing that, and if you're law enforcement, pay them a visit. So Diffio's hierarchical models are able to pull these different pieces of data together across both structured and unstructured, semi-structured, and across domains, and with Basis' help, Rosette's help, across languages. And by pulling these different pieces of data together, we're able to build literally a forest graph. So a key part of Diffio's technology is a forest graph where bits of information will get grouped together by these machine intelligence algorithms so that when an analyst hits on something of interest, the machine is able to instantly recommend other things that are nearby in the forest, things that they wouldn't have ever thought to ask for, perhaps because it's in another language. You've started writing an analysis of a threat in Japanese, and it turns out that there's a key piece of information, say, in Korean or Russian. And in order to catch that other piece of information, you need machine intelligence. If you think about the power of using machines to reach a larger scale, the whole goal is to maintain human level accuracy with machine scale. So what do people do when they have a uh, much wider reach and can touch a larger set of data? Well, they ask questions that they wouldn't have asked before, and they embark on investigations that previously they would have expected to be fruitless. So by starting more ideas, more questions, the human intelligence is able to see farther, leap farther, and they're riding on the shoulders of all these machines. So the, the trick is to connect the two together. I think the biggest change that I've seen in analytic environments is that questions that used to be treated as uh, something to save for the super uh, gray beard old analyst when he has time are now things that they can hand to a junior recruit. Somebody who has very little training as an analyst can suddenly tackle a problem that previously re required huge amounts of tradecraft in order to pull in all the data sources. And now with the machine's help, they're able to touch everything they need. You know, we, we really live in the era of autonomy. 
where one of the big questions of our time is how should machines play a role in our daily lives that's much more like a human than previously. And that's just an incredibly exciting thing to participate in. Uh, I, I heard recently that uh, Toyota is opening a new research center to focus on not self-driving cars, but cars that interact nicely with a human while the car is driving. Right? It's actually a much harder problem. If you think about what's supposed to happen when you're in your new self-driving car, right? we've all signed up to buy a self-driving car, right? So you're, you're sitting in the passenger seat. There's nobody in the driver's seat because the, the car is operating the steering wheel, right? And then there's a deer in the road. So you want the car to be able to say, oh my God, we're going to hit that deer, <laughs> right? And if you don't have really sophisticated human-machine interactions, that's just not an opportunity. It's not a possibility. So what are we doing as entrepreneurs, all of us who are engaged in this marketplace today, is we're trying to invent that interface between machine intelligence and human intelligence. Every time we engage with a new large organization, the most interesting point is when we find that champion who says, yeah, I've been thinking about that, or I started a research project on that, or oh, I heard this could be possible. And once we engage with a champion like that, everything else seems to just fall into place because they've been thinking about how their organization has you know, particular users who need this, they have data sources that should be mined in new ways, they have questions that they haven't been able to answer well. We have a simple Windows desktop application, installs, attaches to your existing office products, and communicates with Diffio.com where our intelligence lives and probes the deep and dark and open webs for you. So, uh, what I'd like to suggest for, for any organization that wants to try this type of new technology is think about your working notes. Think about the things that are sitting nascent, only people touch them today, and how would you like to have machine intelligence engage with those authors, engage with those analysts in your organization to expand those working notes. The key question that you should ask any startup is, tell me about your best power user. Just pick one, whoever's your best power user, and tell us what makes them tick. And if you look at uh, the really successful startups that you know, transition to big companies, it's because they found somebody who might have initially looked like a small market and made them love it, right? And Diffio is engaged right in that process now where we've got this growing number of power users who say, oh, I have this new kind of hard question. I've tried to express it like this. Maybe our machine intelligence nailed it on the first time, or maybe they tell us about how their problem was more complicated than we understood, and then we iterate with them. And it's that creative process of understanding what the end user really wants and what machine intelligence can deliver that makes startups so much fun. When we get to Tokyo, our big objective is to explain to people how machine intelligence can directly affect their understanding of the environment around them. And Japan is a perfect place for understanding the interaction between humans and machines. The technology culture in Japan has evolved to really deeply integrate lots of small changes between machines and human processes over time. It's just a really exciting thing to discuss with people in Tokyo. I think if, if we can help them understand the opportunity for using data that's often forgotten, these working notes that I've been talking about, That'll change how they think about the data that's in their enterprise and how it connects to the data out on the web. And if they want to probe the web deeply, which is really the main technical point that we'd like to bring to Tokyo, if, they, if people would like to probe the web deeply to understand what's just one step beyond or two steps beyond what they currently understand, Diffio will help them do that.